Hello, everyone. Welcome to Elevating Your Life. Uh, another happy, fun day with another great guest. I'm just so grateful. And here we are in the new year. I'm just so happy to share more guests and just continue to be, you know, a creator of, of these great interviews with, with my awesome guests. I want to say happy new year to everyone. And uh, who we have today, I am happy to share, Anne-Marie Marchant. She is the author of The Ripple of Awakening, fantastic book. Anne's passions are all things spiritual, metaphysical, and quantum, but it wasn't always that way. She came from a background of believing that life was black or white, with the need to see it before she would believe it mentally. But she eventually discovered that neither was true. After a series of tragic events and an experience she calls the falling, she was metaphorically and literally brought to her knees. Her life then took on a completely different trajectory, resulting in a slow but profound dismantling of her identity. You just, wow, that's that's something. <laughs> First off, welcome, Anne, welcome. Thank you, Paula. What a joy to be with you. Thank you. I love your beautiful smile and your energy. So we're off to a great start already. <laughs> this positive, loving energy for all of us. I love it. Well, uh, Anne, would you like to share a, a little more of your background and maybe kind of what prompted you to, to write this book? Yeah, sure. Thank you. I mean, for me, really, the, the book was, I would say, the book that I, I sort of craved or, or wanted when I was in the midst of my awakening, the early stages, um, it, the time when I sort of hit the dark night of the soul. And um, it, I, I was in, yeah, I was told I was having a spiritual awakening, although I had no concept of what that was at the time. Um, I was going through a divorce and the menopause. So life was a bit of a struggle to say the least at that time and um yeah that dismantling of of Anne Marie um was a difficult stage you know having been in a marriage for 18 years um and then also physically changing because of the menopause and then the awakening was just like I think it was all part of it at the time and so the yeah yeah, the book really is is kind of the hand I wanted to hold, I think, in a way back then. Mm -hmm. um, and it was it was several years later once I kind of come through the other side and um, I really started to open up more to my creativity um, and started to receive poems and channeled writing. And it was quite a revelation, really. It was not something I'd been used to doing. But um, what I realized was because I'd done a lot of deep healing and I'd cleared a lot of baggage, a lot of old stagnant energy and uh, grief, lots of things I had to heal through that journey. Uh, the result of that was my mind and my heart was open and starting to connect to source, to the universe, to the, the creator and of course, the creator, we are part of that. And the creation started to come through me. And that's when, you know, after a few years of kind of writing newsletters, things like that, which uh, people seem to be very receptive to. And a few people said, oh, Marie, it'd be great if you could write a book. And I thought, hmm, I'm not sure if I'd be up for that. I don't know if that's something I could actually do. Um, but I got a prompt. Um, January 2019 in the middle of the night I woke up and I he heard this voice in my head it said right it's time to write the book oh. and it was very clear <laughs> and I thought yeah I think I'm ready and so began the journey of, of writing the book and um and it's been born so <laughs> I love it <laughs> here and it is so true when we're you know writing something and connected we can just get I know when I was writing my why am I so happy book I mean I'd literally be sitting in the car or doing something and something would come to me discuss this topic you know share about this and that's a mm. fascinating thing it is that mm. you know we can be open and, and receive that kind of thing absolutely yeah, yeah. 
and and I think I know I interviewed quite a few people as well around the awakening journey for the ripple of awakening because I thought you know I had my experience obviously that I could you know talk about but I wanted to bring in that because what I saw there were definite um stages and phases and commonalities within the awakening journey so I, I just thought that would be really helpful to the reader because every you know awakening is going to look different be presented differently and we have our own experiences of that um but I think it is helpful to realize that what is happening is actually for the good but it doesn't always feel like it at the time. Well, it certainly didn't for me. And I think, you know, the people I interviewed, they said that it was like things had to be stripped away or something had to come along to really shake them up, to make them change the direction of their lives or start to look within and do some healing and, um, yeah, wake up, basically. So I think that was important. So people can look at it and think, oh, so I'm feeling this. And this has happened. And it's not just I'm mad. <laughs> there is a bigger picture. There's something actually going on here. So I felt that was important because, as I say, to start with, I didn't have that understanding myself. Mm -hmm. um, but eventually, thankfully, somebody came into my life. The universe delivered them. Um, and they helped me to start to see what was going on. And it was a relief. Um, but it was still quite, it was like walking through treacle to start with, because there was a lot of stuff that had to be brought up, as I say. Um, but um, now I'm very grateful that it did. <laughs> oh, How would you, what, what is your first description of what spiritual awakening is? What do you believe that to be? Yeah, I mean, and again, in the interviews, I asked this question, and without exception, when distilled down, it was basically waking up to who they, who we truly are, um, which is, you know, a spiritual being, not just this form, just this body, they, this identity, um, a, a construct, if you like, that we've kind of come in the world with. We have an identity, don't we, of being a certain age or having a particular background and um, etc and actually spiritual by its very nature an awakening to that is actually realizing that that source um, is within each one of us and it joins us to a love with a capital L um, that really isn't of this world it, and it's an eternal love it's a love that it loves you 100% of the time and never judges. And that's what we're truly tapping into. Um, and some people, I think, naturally have it. But for many, it kind of got switched off. And it certainly got switched off for me. And um, and I never saw myself as spiritual at all. I didn't even really know what that meant, to be honest, In you know, years ago. it was There was no concept uh, for me. But eventually, I started to get that understanding of the bigger picture, shall we say, and realize that we are all part of that. And when we tap into it, then life really takes on a different direction. It's There's far much joy. It's um, much easier. It's full. It's and it, it brings opportunities, people into your life that help you as well to realize who you are. So, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, I don't think it's always recognized, you know, that some people sort of say, oh, it's just an awakening. It happens overnight. And that's very rare. It's not something, not many people that happens to. So it is a gradual, I would say, thing that happens as well. And, you know, for something to have an awakening, awakening, I mean, it can be, life-changing and just exciting and and it just it really can change your perception and so much can't it mm, for sure I mean it I'll be honest it wasn't exciting for me that was not my experience to start with because as I say there was a lot of dismantling and that was very frightening mm -hmm. it was very frightening um so 
it's yeah I, I again I describe the different ways that it can come in how it starts um and quite often it, it can be yeah something that really shakes people's lives up you know a bereavement or a tragedy or illness or a loss of a job or relationship where you start to question things you know and you just think well is this it is this really it <laughs> there's got to be more to life um and that was certainly my experience and um yeah and again I think without exception everyone that I interviewed felt the same they had something that was a tipping point for them mm-hmm. yeah 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 I, in all my life I think what's been a tipping point for me was being born a premature baby less than three pounds not so supposed to survive the night yeah. but I did And that really changed my whole perception in a positive way. My whole life, I just believed on, you know, what can happen and, you know, beautiful things out there and that we're not alone. Yeah. Angels are with us. And something in your book that I just loved was you mentioned Mm. the more curious and open you are, the more your mind will expand and in turn, the more inspirational downloads uh, will transpire for you. I just, that's that's just a powerful statement. Mm. Well, I think that's the thing. It's, it's, that's being receptive and open to what's happening instead of, you know, resisting it and believing that everything is black and white or mm-hmm. life is tough or, um, you know, the universe is unfriendly. Because I think many, many people have, a lot of conditioning around fear um, and not believing that life can flow and be happy and joyous. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's, it is that as I, you know, that within that awakening for me, there did come a tipping point where I started to connect to this source and this love and realize that's who I was. And it was then, you know, then it was like, I mean, joy that is not of this world. It's like, that can't be taken away from you it it's within you it's part of you and when you connect to again to that source i don't know it it's there's a light in it there's there's a trust as well actually that we always have that by our side and available to us and that's very comforting whereas as i say before i i i was very much in control you know anne marie was very much um, the one in charge because that's what I've been taught in my life you know that you you kind of yeah you have to do that when I realized that this other part of me was there that I could trust in instead it was like oh what a relief <laughs> I don't have to do this all on my own you know <laughs> so it was a revelation and and as I say the love that I felt was like I mean, to start with, I, I, it was. Um, I remember one day um, in a, a particular meditation when I'd met a, a, a very inspiring lady called Sarah. This was sort of part way through the awakening, and actually, she was the first person that told me I was actually having an awakening. And um, I was in one of her meditations, and I had this experience of bliss for the first time. And I wanted, I wanted to stay in that meditation. I thought, oh my goodness. Um, so it really opened a doorway and it opened my, actually my heart, which was very closed at that point because I'd had a lot of, you know, things that shut it down, basically. And so that part, that tipping point was to open my heart and to allow the love in and to um, recognize it. And so it was beautiful when I had that moment and I thought, wow, is this is possible? Mm-hmm. It's like it's not from something out in the world, you know, it's not the, the fix from a person or a material thing, or it was like, wow, it's there. And having that knowing that it's available 24 seven, right? Yeah. It's like, yeah. wow, it's, it doesn't switch off. It's only me that would switch off. And I think that's part of helping people to realize it's like, you don't actually have to go anywhere to get it. You don't have to deserve it, earn it you are it it's part of you yeah and that was that was a revelation it's like wow okay <laughs> let's do this yes. let's tap into it <laughs> how inspiring 
And, um, you know, that is so true when we can let go of fear and pull that trust in. Oh my gosh, the door that can open for us, isn't it? Just amazing and fantastic. I think trust is a massive one. Mm. Yeah. Because if it's like, you know, people used to say to me, well, let go, Anne Marie, and trust. And I think, well, what am I trusting in? Because I hadn't, in the early days, I hadn't, I didn't have a relationship with, with, god with a higher power with angels that it was zero absolutely nothing um so i had to that was part of my awakening and and how the universe started to deliver everything which was not of my making and it was like only sort of several years down the line i kind of looked back and i thought oh my goodness these it's like i started to join the dots and realize that different opportunities came along uh, meeting certain people it was like I'd get to a certain point and then the next door would open and the next thing would come and it was all of it was needed to to lead me by the hand in a way that I did start to trust um, in this bigger thing oh, so yes. yeah that is wonderful and would you say that uh, self-care taking care of ourselves can make a big difference in our awakening as well. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Thank you for bringing that in Paula, because um, I talk about that in, in the ripple of awakening, there's a section in there about that because yeah, it was something that um, when I started my awakening with, you know, I had a, a young family at the time and um husband and working so life was busy and um I remember you know I didn't give myself a lot of of that self-care really because I was sort of always so busy and I just thought well that's what you do you know to be a good mum and a good wife and it was almost like I put myself last and um and actually at that point you know I love this analogy it's like you know if if your cup is empty you know, what have you got to give? Mm. Absolute, absolutely nothing. So I think this filling our cup up first, then it's full, and then we can give. Um, but I think many, many people are taught that that's selfish. And um, and actually, you know, it's almost like we wear this badge of honour, you know, when we suffer or, you know, we become the martyr almost. And quite often it's subconscious. I don't think it's always, you know, we realize it's happening. Um, but I see I, certainly then, you know, and I still see it where a lot of people are just drained because they're just, you know, they're not filling, they're replenishing themselves in a healthy, loving way. And and actually what's really important is that when we do that, you know, this self-care, it's, it's done guilt-free. <laughs> so, uh, again, I did have quite a bit of guilt you know I think oh should I be doing this or um but eventually it was it was key to my well-being and and that can look you know I think to start with for me it was starting to have things like massage and holistic therapies that kind of thing that was really t- so I could sort of receive in that way um and then taking time out from myself you know as I say when the family were young it's not something I really did very often Mm. but actually realizing how important it it, it was um and then later down the line and actually now my my practice you know is very much meditation and prayer and being with source it's it's like that's the key for me to keeping this in my life really because it's I don't like have a day doing it and a day off and doing it it's every day yeah and 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 that's really important for me now that's what fills me up and then of course I I've got a heart that's full I've I've got stuff you know so much to give and it and it's given without expecting anything in return that's the difference it's not conditional it's Mm -hmm. not you know if I give this to you I get something back if you do get something back, I mean, that's wonderful, but it's not done for that. Do you see what I mean? And that's, I mean, to me, that's what love is, you know, with a capital L, love just wants to give of itself. Loving, so just given with expecting nothing in return. I mean, 
that's giving ourselves a gift. It is having that it is. mindset, heart set. And it just, it multiplies, I believe, that the beautiful energy of mm. love and kindness and caring. It really does. And it's, it it's true Absolutely. how medi medica meditations can, you know, really uh, make a difference in our lives. You know, a morning prayer or meditation, anything along that line, you know, can start our day in a certain way and really make a difference. It can, absolutely. I mean, it's like the plug-in. It's like I was talking to someone the other day about this and it's like, you know, if you're, if you're using a, a vacuum cleaner and you plug it in, but you don't actually switch it on and you, you're wasting all this energy, you're going around, you know, vacuuming everywhere, but there's no nothing coming in. And it's a bit like us in life. If we don't plug in and actually switch it on, which is from our source, I always, I always kind of do this, you know, from the vertical source, then that's why we're so drained and running out of energy all the time. So when we're plugged into that source through through meditation and prayer and, you know, being in awareness and being present, you know, it's, wow, you know, that's it's been such a big shift for me to be present in my life. And, um, and that doesn't mean it's all happy and all dancing you know sometimes things can happen in our lives which they still do but can I still be present with that and not abandon myself or um, run away and I think that's been the big shift and I remember in the very very early days of my awakening reading this quote it, it said um, I don't know who wrote it but it said how many now moments have you missed Oh, I love that. I love that because we can get so caught up in this happened. I'm thinking about my regrets or what happened, or I'm going to be happy when this gets done or when that's done. And, and yeah, we can lose so many now moments. That is so yeah. true. It was really, it was like a sh shock when I read it, it really kind of shook me. And I, and I thought, Oh my God, I've missed so many. So many now moments, because that's exactly what you were saying, Paula. You know, this my motto, you know, when I say before awakening was forward planning all the time. I was always, you know, ahead planning, planning, planning. Um, and of course, what is under the surface of that is fear. Mm -hmm. So, and of course, if we're in reg regret or coulda, woulda, shoulda, we're in fear as well and blame or shame which actually depletes our energy when we're in that vibration. Yes. So that's why I think the practice of becoming more present, um, because, yeah, there's the ego loves to kind of, as you say, I'll be happy when I uh -huh. get yeah. yes. X, Y, and Z, or when this person changes, I'll be happy. <laughs> yes. 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 And it's like, really, just let's just give that one up, because it doesn't yeah. work, <laughs> not in my experience. I've always anyway. said, I am not my car. <laughs> yeah you know, so I think that nice. and I think the practice of meditation or mindfulness you know it's become so much more mainstream now which is wonderful people don't think it's all woo woo and a bit scary mm -hmm. um it's like oh yeah that's what you know and I love that I, I love that it's it's starting to open up more and not seem as some strange thing it's actually beneficial to right. everything and everybody it's wonderful how how so much is spreading on you know talking and sharing about awakening and all of that it's wonderful mm -hmm. um please share with everyone Anne marie any information you want to share website email anything you want to tell the audience mm, thank you well yeah firstly my my book is is the ripple of awakening uh, a mighty companion on the spiritual awakening journey. So it's now available on Amazon in the UK and in America. Um, it's published by O Books. So you can also go on there. Um, my website is my name, basically. So it's annemariemarchand.co.uk. And Anne Marie has a hyphen between Anne and Marie and um, no E on Anne. <laughs> so you can see it down there actually i think in the corner there that's, yep, so that's yep. basically it's Love yeah it. 
anmarymarchand.co.uk and on there you, there's links to my Facebook page or my YouTube page that kind of thing so yeah that's how you all find me fun. So. all that fun well with a couple minutes left in the show what last message do you want to share with any everyone Anne Marie yeah thanks Paula I mean I really just would say to people wherever they are um however they're feeling you know there is there is hope and um to trust that you are worthy and deserving of this love that's available to you and just start somewhere you know just take that first step just even if it's a tentative first step because mine were very very tentative to start with but um yeah and, and you don't have to suffer or do this alone there's so much support and love out there and that's why I wrote the book really it was like a hand to hold through that journey and the more we can learn to connect and share from our hearts I think that's how the ripple goes out and I think we all need that and um, so to know that that help is there and ask and it is given and not necessarily in the way you could expect because I know for myself I had no concept of how that would happen but the universe just amazed me again and again it's like wow it, so, it is it's amazing and what I've discovered and seen over the years is if you open up and just trust yeah things can manifest and come into your life that you'd not even dreamed of you exactly. know <laughs> just opening up and and saying yes and trusting mm. and it's it's really a wonderful wonderful and amazing gift for all of us it really is and you know what you give away comes back to you tenfold that's what I've mm -hmm. seen and you know like your beautiful smile you know when you give a smile away it's that gift is like you can never know how that will touch people really and I've you know I interviewed one particular friend and she said one day she was in a very dark place suicidal she just thought why am I here really desperate and she went into her local supermarket, it was Christmas time, and she was ready to get out, you know, of this world. But a woman smiled at her, I mean, a, an authentic smile. And she said to me, Anne-Marie, she said, that smile changed my life. <sighs> it, because you feel it, don't you? Don't you feel it when it's from the heart? Oh, yeah. And, and so never underestimate things like that, you know? It can yeah. change. Something as simple as a smile can change the vibration of the energy in the room I mean it it can it's huge that caring that caring yeah, yeah. oh yeah. and Marie this is so fantastic I, I'm just so happy to have met you and had the opportunity to read your book and you know the beautiful message that you're sharing with everyone is is really a a beautiful thing no oh. Thank you, Paula. I really appreciate it. It's it, it's a joy, you know, it's a joy to just share this information. And thank you as well. for. Thank I looked you. at your beautiful website and I thought, wow, <laughs> what a gift. So thank you so much. You're so welcome. And everyone out there, thank you and big hugs. And I am sending you all a big smile. And I appreciate you being part of the show. <laughs> and you know, connecting with me every week. And I'm grateful. Thank you so much, everybody. Big hugs. And again, Happy New Year. Oh, my gosh. Here's Yay. to a great year ahead. <laughs> Thanks. Absolutely. Thank you.